Hey y'all, um, welcome to Saturday with Stephanie. I'm being pretty quiet. Um, I'm actually pre-recording this on Tuesday. Uh, and that is because I'm currently in Nebraska and we're about to have an outdoor funeral service for my grandpa who passed away last week. Um, he was 93 and had a good long life. Um, and so just thankful that we could be with family um, and celebrating and remembering him today. But I wanted to film from here. I know I had promised you some more about baptism and the catechism and we'll get back to that, I promise. But for today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what these times where we're mourning the loss of someone really mean to us. Um, And I apologize for the, the wobbliness. Um, it's a little complicated holding a camera uh, phone while trying to be discreet in a corner of the cemetery. Where I'm sitting right now, and I'm gonna try to show you, is actually where our son was originally buried. Um, so my husband last week shared with you the story of our daughter from 2011 and what some of you may not know who are watching this is that before Samantha we had a little boy um, his name was Jonah and he was stillborn um, he this was in, back in 2003 we had been married a year and a half and unfortunately he did not live long enough to see this world um, he was stillborn at about 30 weeks of pregnancy and so we had had his remains cremated and brought to Lincoln Nebraska where my family was from and I knew all of my grandparents would be buried in this cemetery this section of the cemetery is one that's known as babyland and yes a lot of cemeteries actually do have such a thing um, they have designated places for parents who might wish to bury their children. So we brought Jonah here and we had a funeral graveside service similar to the one we're about to have today for my grandpa. Um, and it was a really beautiful thing. Now, when I was talking last week about baptism, one of the things I can't talk to you about without, I can't talk to you about baptism without acknowledging that I could look at it as being very difficult that my son was never baptized. Um, he was stillborn. By the time he was out and into this world, he was already gone. But I know he's in heaven. I know he's with his sister, Samantha. I know that he's at Jesus' side. I know he's there. And part of that is because of the promise given to us in scripture with the commandments, um, that it says that I, the Lord your God, will love those who love me to, for a thousand generations. I will keep blessings. Those who are in the Lord, we share these blessings with our children, we pass them on. Well, during my pregnancy, I was in church a lot. Um, maybe not as much as I have ever been, but Jonah heard the word of God. Jonah tasted the Lord's Supper. Jonah was called as a child of God from the very beginning of his life. And though his life was extremely short and only lasted for a period of a few months inside of me, I still know that he's in heaven. Um, we thank God for our children all the time. We thank God for all of you that we can share these moments with you. Um, I'm so thankful that my grandfather was baptized all those years ago because he is one of those generations before me that passed on the faith. Um, in fact, a friend of mine posted on my Facebook when I shared about the death of my grandfather, about him being a good and faithful servant of the Lord. 
And this was somebody who was a professor of mine in college who happened to have grown up in the same church as my mom. And so he remembered from when he was a child being influenced by my grandfather. Um, my grandfather served as many years as the Sunday school superintendent at his church. Um, he loved to sing out the hymns. He knew all of the liturgy by heart. And his church was very traditional, but it was lovely in how joyful people would be. You know, sometimes you can go to a more traditional congregation and it can feel very somber and sad. And it never felt that way when I would go to church with them. Instead, it was just filled with joy and singing. And everyone was so familiar with all the words and they were all packed in together in a way that I can't even fathom during this pandemic even attempting to do. Hence the outdoor service today. Um, but yes, his faith was beautiful to see. And I know it's really especially hard on my mom and my aunt who have now lost both of their parents um, and are struggling to figure out all of the ins and outs of what to do with the estate um, and how to take care of all of the legalities that are just complicated at times like this. But more important, they carry a legacy of faith that was passed to them, was passed then to me and my sister, that my sister passes on to her children, that I passed on to my children as young as they were. I know they're in heaven. I'm absolutely confident of this. Because God placed a calling in our family through many generations. And it continues on. It will continue on through my sister's children as they have children. Um, it will continue through your children as they have children and beyond. So I'd like to encourage you to think back on those that have influenced your faith, whether it was your parents or grandparents or a friend of the family or someone you met at church. If that person is still living, take the time to reach out and thank them for the influence that they've had in your faith development. If they are not, then thank God for the wonderful witness that they gave to you. I thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I pray the Lord's blessings and I thank you for all of the prayers and encouragement and, and all of that um, during this time as my family grieves the loss of my grandpa. I'm so thankful that he and my grandmother are together again in heaven with Jesus. Um, there's no better place to be. So um, I pray the Lord's richest blessings on your worship tomorrow and your week ahead. God bless you. Good night.